This is part 19 of Entity Framework Tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing table pair hierarchy inheritance with code first approach. This is continuation to part 18. In part 18, we discussed implementing table pair hierarchy inheritance with database first approach. In this video, we will be modifying the example that we worked with in part 18. So please watch part 18 before proceeding. This is what we want to achieve in this video. We're going to have these three classes, employee, permanent employee, and contract employee. Permanent employee and contract employee classes will be inherited from the employee class. So this employee base class is going to contain all the properties that are common to permanent employee and contract employee, while these two classes will contain the properties specific to them. Now, based on these three classes, we want the entity framework to be able to generate this single employee table because in table per hierarchy inheritance, one database table is used to store the data for all of the entities in the inheritance hierarchy. So let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the example that we worked with in the previous session. This employee model is generated using database first approach. So let's go ahead and delete this employee model from this project. And let's also delete the connection string that is auto-generated by the entity framework. All right, to this project, let's add a class file and let's name it employee.cs. And this class is going to contain ID, first name, last name, gender properties. To speed things up, I have already typed the required code, so let's paste it here. And let's add another class file to this project. And let's call this permanent employee. And this class is going to contain the properties that are specific to permanent employee. In our case, perm, uh, annual salary is specific to permanent employee. So let's copy and paste it there. And we want to make this class inherit from employee class. Similarly, let's add another class file. And let's call this contract employee.cs. And we want this class to be inheriting from employee base class and contract employee specific properties are hours worked and hourly pay. Right, so we have the three classes and they are related by inheritance. The next step is to add another class file and this is going to be employee db context. And we want this employee DB context class to be inheriting from DB context class, which is present in system.data.entity namespace. And this employee DB context class is going to contain a public property, which is going to return a DB set of employees. And let's call the property employees. All right. The next step is to include the connection string in a web.config file to speed things up. I have already typed the connection string, so let's copy and paste it right here. All right, the code within webform1.aspx uh, is not going to change in any way. Okay, so let's go ahead and build the solution first to make sure everything still compiles. Now we have uh, an error here. Let's actually look at that. It says this annual salary is not defined. If you look at the spelling here, I think within our employee class, the spelling is, I mean, in permanent employee class, the spelling is um, annual salary with double N there. In the code behind file, and now you, we have W. I think in the previous session, we misspelled that. So let's correct that here. All right, now let's go ahead and build the solution to make sure it still compiles. So build succeeded. Now let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So this employee is table, you know, we created that in the previous session when we used database first approach. So let's go ahead and delete that employee table from the sample database. Actually, let's delete the sample database itself. Right, so the sample database is gone now. Now let's go ahead and run this project. So when we select load all employees, you know, the code within the radio button list click uh, event handler should be executed. Look at this. The page is being loaded. Uh, so at this point, the sample database and employees table should be created. Let's refresh this databases. Notice that we have got the sample database and employees table. 
and let's look at the columns. So there we go. All the columns are present. You know, ID, first name, last name, gender, hours worked, hourly pay, annual salary, and discriminator columns. Now, if you look at the order of columns, you know, in the previous session, if you look at, you know, how this table was generated, we have, you know, ID, first name, last name, gender, and then we have annual salary, and then hours worked and hourly pay, and finally discriminator. But if you look at this database table here, the contract employee columns are present after you know gender column so hours worked and hourly pay we don't want you know the column order to be like that instead we want annual salary to be present after gender column if that's the case then we can use column attribute to dictate the entity framework the order in which we want these columns to be created within the employees table so we can go to employee, for example. So we want the ID column to be created first in the uh, employees table. So I'm going to use column attribute for that. Now column attribute is present in system.componentModel.DataAnnotations.Schema namespace. So let's bring that in. And then this attribute has got a named parameter order where we can specify the order of the column within the database table. So we want that column uh, to be uh, you know the first column so I'm specifying the order as one similarly you can specify the order for first name last name gender etc to speed things up I have typed that code already so let me copy it and paste it right here so now first name is two last name is three gender is four after gender we want annual salary to be created so I'm going to go to permanent employee class and then I'm going to say here the order is going to be so let's use the column attribute uh, this is present in system.componentModel so let's bring that in and here we are going to specify order as 5 so now after gender column annual salary will be created along the same lines for contract employee you know hours worked we want that to be 6 and hourly pay 7 so to speed things up I have typed that code so let's copy and paste it there okay so now let's go ahead and delete this sample database let's rerun the web form okay we need to bring in the required namespace so let's bring that in and then let's run the web form so let's select the radio button the page is being refreshed it's done let's refresh the databases folder so we have the sample database employees table and then when we look at the columns notice that the order is correct now now let's execute this insert script to insert some test data so data is inserted now let's actually refresh this web form and we select load employees look at this the web form continues to work in the same way here we are using code first approach load permanent employees we get only the permanent employees and load contract employees we get only the contract employees okay now let's see what happens when we try to insert an employee so what I'm gonna do here is uh, for web form 1 let's flip this to the design mode let's actually auto format this to choose the colorful scheme and then let's add a button control here and let's add another button control so this one let's say the text on the button something like add permanent employee and similarly for this button let us say add contract employee alright now let's double click the button controls to generate the respective click event handlers and you know when we click on add permanent employee we want to add a new permanent employee to the database table and to speed things up again I have uh, typed the required code so let's copy and paste this code within the click event handler 
So if you notice what we are doing here is creating an instance of permanent employee. Now irrespective of whether it's permanent employee or contract employee, they are always going to have first name, last name, gender properties which are inherited from the employee base class. And then the property that is specific to permanent employee is annual salary. So we are populating annual salary here and then we are adding this permanent employee object to the employees collection using the add method and then finally we are calling the save changes method. Similarly, when we click the add contract employee button, we want to create a new contract employee object and save that employee to the database table. So here we are creating the contract employee again specifying the first name, last name, gender and then for contract employee we also need to specify hourly pay and hours worked. So we are adding that contract employee to the employees collection and then invoking the save changes method. So with these changes let's run this and at the moment if you look at the data that we have here So we have seven rows. Now let's go ahead, load all employees. For some reason it's taking time here. So yeah, it has loaded all the employees. Now let's click add permanent employee. So it has, you know, processed that request. Now let's go back to the database table. Look at that, that new permanent employee is added. And look at the discriminator column is automatically populated as permanent employee. We didn't tell you know, or we didn't supply any value for that column, but Entity Framework was able to, you know, add that, you know, value to that row automatically because the type of object that we are creating here is permanent employee. That's why Entity Framework knows what value to supply for that discriminator column. In fact, Entity Framework is the one which actually created that discriminator column. We didn't create that, right? Now, similarly, let's go ahead and add a contract employee. So that's processed. Now let's execute the select statement. Look at that. Stacy is a contract employee. Look at the discriminator column. It says it's a contract employee because the type of object that we are creating within the code behind file here is contract employee object right that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day